You know, I'm really trying to work on like different camera angles to get the most amount of bookshelves behind me, but this is the first time I've ever actually had like three behind me and it feels so cool like it just it just looks so cool like obviously i see it all the time but to actually have this really good camera angle is really cool especially because like i've discovered i can use my bed but it's always going to be like a little bit off center and also something that i'm just going to touch upon because this is just like an intro of me telling you different things that is going on i am actually wearing this crop top which is i know a really random thing to say but i've never worn a crop top in the whole entire time that i've had booktube i've never really shown this part of myself very often but over the course of the last three months I've been on a diet and I've lost eight kilos and obviously like I've got a long way to go like I've still got a tummy and I'm still feel fat in myself which is obviously something that's really hard because people can tell me oh you look so skinny you look so nice but it's only my mental image that I'm trying to work on so I'm the only one that can tell me that I look good even though I do appreciate people saying things and I don't think you guys are going to judge me for wearing a crop top because I feel like I'm not really in front of you guys, like this isn't me right now actually talking to you guys to be like, oh my god, look at me, but like I'm just really excited, like I've lost 8 kilos, I feel so proud of that achievement and I've still got 12 kilos that I want to lose, but this is all the things that I wanted to talk to you about, this is such a long winded intro but you guys know how I am, but to get onto the reason why we're here, I want to tell you all about my favourite books of 2021. This is such a bad video guys and I'm only saying that because I read 33 books last year. I am so mad at myself. I know it doesn't matter how much I read, but it does matter. It does matter to myself because, like, I used to read so much. I have all these books and I'm not reading them. And also for the fact that every single year I do my top 15 books. Because I started my booktube in 2015 and I was like, oh, this is a fun video, you know, top 15 books of 2015. But then it got to 2016 and I'm like, I am not going to continue doing this because that is just too many books to have as favourites, even though some years I probably could have used it more than others but I'm always gonna do 15 and it was a struggle to pick what I wanted to put on this list because I'd say only the top five are like new favorites and the rest are just ones that I liked more than the other 18 that I didn't put on this list but normally I would have like 50 plus books not on this list so I feel really mad about this situation because it was just really annoying for me to pick and that's kind of why this video has taken a long time because I didn't want to pick for the longest time but I'm not breaking tradition so just know that all these books I did like of course but like the top five are like the sweet spot of new favorites but I'll try and get through these books as quickly as I can because generally this video always goes for a really long time I know I've already been talking for a lot so I will tell you my thoughts and feelings, but like in the quick way. So coming in at number 15, we have A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass. I don't know why I didn't really want to put this up higher in the list. Like I knew this book was going to be on the list because I feel like I haven't read a new Sarah J Mass book for like the longest time. But it's really funny because with this book, obviously I actually didn't want to read it at first because I've never liked Nesta's character. Cassian was the reason to keep this going. But I will admit that over the course of reading this book, I've discovered that I actually really do like her character. She was very misunderstood and obviously from Feyre's eyes she sees her as a victim and a monster so actually being able to know how Nesta feels and to be able to see her romance with Cassian grow and to also know how Cassian feels about a lot of situations it added a lot of light to the series that I think we really needed but I also think because this was a year that I've read a lot more adult contemporary even though I say a lot more when it isn't really that many in book amount but like I just I read a lot of adult contemporary so this is low because even though I like the romance and I like the story there were some plot things that I thought were a bit annoying and also because I'm not going to get any more content for a long time and it makes me sad and to get all my favorite authors out of the way we've also got Queen of Era Darkness by Cassandra Clare so these two are pretty much tied because there was a trope in this book that really irritated me like a lot of the time but I am very proud of myself for finally getting to this book so I don't care if I read 100 books this year this book would have made the list it gets a placement because I am so proud of myself for finally getting to it but it was really good to finally know what happened to Emma and Julian and did you guys know that throughout the course of me not reading this for two years I never got spoiled I'm proud of the internet for not spoiling this book for me because literally you can go on Goodreads and one person writes every spoiler in a book and you literally are looking at the spoiler free section and you're like what the F but there was one time that I saw a snippet about a character that may or may not have come back and I didn't actually understand it it. so that was the only thing that ever happened and that actually intrigued me to actually finally pick up the story 
and it wasn't what I thought it was going to be which is completely fine but like I am just really happy I loved being back with the Blackthorns I love the story dynamic and this world is just so big now and there's so many different characters and it's just crazy to think that this started with Clary and now we're here. Next, I want to talk about Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I'm still weirded out that I actually can add audiobooks to this list because I used to always own every single book on my list, but I'm trying not to buy as many books even though I still have like another book haul that I need to release where I bought a lot of books. I really loved reading this book. It was very diverse and I really enjoyed reading the trans rep because I'm trying to read more trans stories because it is still a topic that like I understand but I still want to read different characters point of views and different stories and different ideals and I think it has been really good to read books like this and I think it's something we all should definitely be doing. But it was so much fun and even though this book was kind of highly predictable where it was going to go I really enjoyed the story. I love the magic element. Maritza was a great character. I really liked Julian. And then Yadriel just had such a sweet story and I just I just really enjoyed it. Like it was a good book for family and story and fun and I just had a great time. Number 12 on my list is Beach Read by Emily Henry. So this is a book that I read more recently and this was one that I wasn't actually sure if I was going to add on my list but then when I was looking at what I had to pick from I realized I am going to put this on my list. I really did enjoy the story. I just had some issues getting actually behind the romance of the story because they were so different and I know that's the point and then they're meant to be so different and they're right in each other's genres and then they're meant to understand each other but I just thought they were too different. I didn't see the romance happening even though that's exactly where the story was going to go but the banter and the way that they really care about each other and the different adventures they went on really endeared this book to me and I enjoyed it so profusely by the end and I was rooting for these characters and I'm just so glad that I did finally read this story and I'm actually also kind of glad that I read her second book before I read this one because if this was the book that I read first I would have been so much more hesitant to go into the second book which is like highly on this list because it's my favorite which is a won't tell you where it is but it's coming but I just think it was a good story and I ended up really loving Gus he's a really well written character and I just had a lot of fun. Number 11 on my list is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. I'm kind of so sad though because I don't think we're going to get Volume 5 in 2022 so I think I'm going to have to wait a while before I actually find out what's going to happen to these boys but we're also going to get the tv show but i love this comic series so incredibly much and i think every single year that i've read a book it's become on my list because it's just so endearing it's so sweet but also this one was actually so heartbreaking because it delved more into charlie's eating disorder which i was really happy to read about like it was really good to have more information about how he's feeling and how his family was helping him because from reading nick and charlie and this winter alice oseman actually put a lot of threads into what nick and charlie actually had to deal with surrounding his eating disorder and his OCD and it was actually really heartbreaking to actually have to see it start to play out because we're right in the thick of it in this comic but we actually got to see the aftermath in those books and it's really cool that there is so much content where we get to see all different degrees of them in their lives and their history and their story. And it's always kind of nice that we know that they're probably always going to pop up as like side characters in different stories and stuff. But I so incredibly enjoyed this and I highly recommend the comic if you haven't picked it up yet. Just know that the hype isn't fake. It's really well deserved. Number 10 is Take a Hit, Danny Brown by um, Talia Hibbert. I'm just so excited. I was so not a fan of Chloe Brown and you guys know this so I won't delve into that too much. But I picked up Danny. I was hesitant and I was like, oh. God, gut punch, because fake dating is one of my favorite things. I incredibly love it. It is such a good trope. Like, it's starting to become my, my favourite thing ever. Like, Hate to Love is still my favourite, but so many books have done a shit job of it lately that it pisses me off. And, like, even though I end up enjoying the stories, the trope that pulled me in was written badly, so it makes me sad. But I really enjoyed this, and just Danny and Raph have such a sweet relationship, and Raph has gone through a lot of stuff in his life, so he is a very overbearing and protective male, but it wasn't the way that you just feel suffocated. Like, he has such a, like, sweet presence and he cares about Danny so much and just to watch their relationship grow and also how Danny like hates everyone but like loves him and just like oh my god like it's so good it's so good like I highly recommend it if you want a really good romance. Number nine on my list is Mistletoe Mr. Right by Sarah Morgenthaler and it feels like a freaking age since I've read this story so uh, it's about Lana and Rick. Okay, Lana and Rick. So this is the second book in the tourist attraction. So I listened to this book, but I actually read most of it the year before, but finished listening to it in the start of 2021, so it gets to count on my list. But I also read Enjoy the View, but I didn't enjoy it as much. But I really like this story because it's basically 
she's like a multi-millionaire and he's really poor so I really enjoyed that dynamic for their story but also for the fact that in the last book you could see that there was a vibe between Rick and Lana and then we finally get Lana's story and she is a rich girl but she is a person still. Money hasn't changed who she is and I just think it's so sweet because Rick always feels like he wasn't enough for her but you are dude and it's like Christmas vibes so it's just very sweet and I love that it takes place in Alaska. It really makes me want to travel even though I can not at the moment even though I do plan on going to Melbourne and which is really exciting and I also plan to do Brisbane at the end of the year depending on seeing people and doing things and having fun just hopefully COVID lets me but I'm also booked in for my booster in like a week and a half so I just gotta make it to my booster and I will feel a lot better about things but I am just so incredibly happy that I did pick up this series because I've only ever listened to these on audiobook but this is just so good highly recommend. Number eight on my list is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston so this is a little bit of a letdown like not in a bad way but like Red White and Royal Blue two years ago was like my number one book and this one only takes eight place but I still really enjoy it like just I've read so many more adult contemporaries since then and I have so much love for them. I really enjoy the story because it felt very simplistic even though it wasn't because I loved the way that August just connected to the people around her and how she was there in the New York City lifestyle and it just makes me want to go like this is the book that made me really want to go to New York even though I always have wanted to go but then after watching so many Christmas movies that's also developed into wanting to go for a Christmas in New York like Christmas and New Year's that is what I want to do but I really love this story it's all the friendship connections and the main group that I've really appreciated Appreciate, but there's also so many different love stories happening in this book and even though August and Jane are the main story I just I can't and there's also a mystery element to this book that I thought was really well written as well and I just oh like I appreciate it so much like it's such a good story there are so many different elements and storylines and tangents in this book and I just think it was just such a worldly love written book and I just really highly recommend it like I can't I can't even talk because I enjoyed this so much. Number seven on my list is The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. I had to put this on my list because I was beyond excited when I found out that I was getting another book in a trilogy world that I really really loved. I thought it ended because Truly Devious was over like they figured out the case they discovered what they needed to do and like it was so well done so it was actually really nice to actually have a new story but also a new murder case so we could see Stevie working on something that wasn't her main passion because once she did do that case and afterwards she was kind of really a bit not knowing really what she wanted to do with her life and where she wanted to go and obviously she still wanted to do the crime thing but then when she was brought in to do another murder mystery it was really cool to see how she interacted with the case that she didn't know everything about and every single time something happened it was done really well and I just really enjoyed it and it was so nice to see everyone back and this was such a fan service book and it made me so happy. Number six on my list is actor Eve, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert as well so I had to add the next book in the series. I know it's really random that I have two books from the same trilogy but as I said I didn't have much to pick from but these are companion novels so I think it's okay. Generally if there is something that I've read like the whole trilogy of or read so many books of whatever I normally only add like one of them if it's multiple in that year or if that's only one book I've read in that year then it can go on the list. Like it just depends on what books I read but generally companion novels are basically standalones that just relate to each other. I just really resonated with Eve because I just kind of felt like I could see myself in her character because there's a lot of things that I felt like very similar with that I just related to with her and I also just think Jacob even though he's such a grumpy grump was just such a little, little more sunshine like he is not the sunshine she is but like there is so much more depth to him and so many books try to do the whole they were a dick and then they ended up being a nice guy trope and a lot of the time it's done really stupid and their reasons for being a dick just aren't written well but Jacob's actually makes a lot more sense and he actually does have autism so he's not really a dick it's just the way that he perceives the world is obviously different to what we see so people don't like that they find it kind of hard when people don't think the way that they do but I think this book was well written I love that it takes place at a bed and breakfast it felt like a way more quieter book and I just love the like homey vibes that it gave off and the romance was just so good like I just enjoyed this book so profusely okay guys drum roll because we are at the top five these are the top five books that just took my whole freaking soul
I love them. So number five is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. I did not expect a Tessa Bailey book to ever be this high on my list because Tools of Engagement made my list last year, but it was in like the lower half of the video. But like, I appreciated this so much. And like, yes, the Shit's Creek vibes are the main thing that makes me really, really happy. This was just such a well-written book because I really loved the struggles that Piper goes through considering that she was the neat girl and then her entire fortune and lifestyle was taken away from her. And then she thrived in the situation that she was put in and then we've got Brendan who is a character that's a very loyal very manly man he's a fisherman and he has no time for romance and then Piper just sneaks up on him and just takes his life by storm and he's just you know he's done for he is done for and I just love it so much because watching the way that the town interacts with Piper and how they don't want her there at first and then they start to realize she's actually amazing as I have also realized that she's amazing but I just think this was a good story I highly recommend reading it like I highly recommend all of them but this one like I feel like could get you into a dog contemporary if you've been wanting to get into it next on my list is Shipped by Angie Hockman so this is a great story I read this earlier on in the year and this is one that I just like kind of randomly picked up like I know it was my anticipated reads list but I thought it might have been like sitting on my shelf for a while. This makes me miss traveling and also the fact too that I am going to do a cruise at some point. I'm gonna obviously wait until it's safer to do so and we're allowed to move around but me and my mum planned on doing a cruise before COVID happened and that was meant to be in 2020 sometime and now it's 2022 so it has not happened clearly but I really enjoyed this because it's a definitely good written story of work rivals because they're both going for this job and then they they have to go on a cruise to think of a really good pitch for the company and then they end up getting booked on the same cruise so they have to deal with each other the whole entire time but then as they're doing all the cruise activities and hanging out and Graham who is my favorite boy ever starts to be just really nice to her all the time and Henley's just really freaking confused it's just done so well but I just loved watching all the things that they did because I want to do these things I want to travel but if you just want to get to a book about a man that is just so well written Pick it up. I told you it was coming up on the list, but People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry comes in third. I am so keen. This is a book that I picked up at my grandma's. Obviously, I brought it with me, but I knew that I'd heard really good things about this story. But, like, as I started to read it, it didn't even take me, like, ten pages before I was like, oh. I love it because it literally is so well written because we have chapters in the present and then chapters that take us back to all the previous holidays because they've been friends for 10 years and every single year they have gone on a holiday together because Alex and Poppy are just awesome but like the first one starts with a holiday from five years ago that really sets up both characters and then you just start to really get into the story and it's so sad because I love books where you're friends and then there's a falling out and then they have to become friends again to only be in love. It's so good. Like, I just loved it so much. I really flew through this book in the sense that it only took me five days, which is really good for me. But I really enjoyed this and also another book that makes me miss traveling. Like, I want to just go on little holidays all the time. I want to go places. I want to explore. I want to meet people. It sounds so fun. But I just, oh, it's so, it's so good. I, I love it. Number two is seriously one of the best things I have read this year. But there is a book that topped it. But The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. Like, oh my god. Like, I had been hearing hype about this book. And at first I was like, what is this shit? And then it took me like a little while before I was like, oh my god, this actually sounds really good. Like, it was the words fake dating that made me be like, mm. And then I saw the cover and I was like, oh my god, they kind of look like Ray and Kylo. And then I heard it was a fan fiction. And the fact that a Raylo fan fiction book made it to number one in the New York Times bestsellers is an amazing feat. I'm a Star Wars fan, so I actually really enjoy having something like this. Some people wouldn't. And the fact too is like Adam and Olive really do relate to the characters but it doesn't really relate like I am a big fan of Star Wars so I was kind of looking for it but it wasn't the main reason I picked up this book because I like fake dating but to also read a book about science was really cool because I haven't actually read anything this sciencey based before and a lot of it I'm just there like what? I don't even know what that word means. But this book is full of tropes but they're so well written and just Adam Carlson is just like He's the perfect man. Like, I know he's a really grumpy grump at the start. You really start to understand that he's just, he's just a perfect man. I love him. Like, seriously, Adam Carlson and Aaron Blackford are just, like, on the same strand of man. That is perfect. And number one, I'm so excited, and it's a book that I listened to, and it is Boyfriend Material by... <laughs> Who's this by? Oh my god, it is, it is, it is by, um... 
<laughs> go Google it. Alexis Hall. It's by Alexis Hall. Uh, it's Alexis Hall. So I I effed it, but I feel like if I redid this, I would feel so bad because like then I'd be like, <clears throat> I know the author, but like this is my favorite book ever. It's all time. Okay, like and I know it reminds me of Red, White, and Royal Blue. The two books about disaster boys have made the top of my list, but like yes, okay, it's so sweet because it's another fake dating, even though. Red, White and Royal Blues was more like a fake friendship and then they ended up dating and then it was like hiding their relationship. This one is like, obviously Luke has had a lot of issues because he's never felt like he's been loved enough and his dad's a shitty person. And then we've got Oliver who's always strived to be perfect. So they've both got different issues that they're dealing with, but then they come together and they actually become really good friends at first, which I thought was the most beautiful thing about this story. And then as they started to develop into being like really good friends and then boyfriends and then lovers and just oh, like, it's just, it's, it's so good like I just made me so happy listening to this story and I'm so excited because we get husband material this year I'm like <laughs> oh, I mean I hope <laughs> I hope if they don't get married I'm gonna be so mad because like don't stress me I'm like stressing myself out but just <sighs> I love it like at least there was one book that made me so incredibly happy this year I mean like they're all made me happy though they all made me happy but Number one. So I don't own everything that I read this year, but like I had a really good time. Like, I mean, I just wish I had more to choose from, like to make it more cutthroat because that's always fun. But like, I loved them all so much. Like I really do. So guys, that is all for my video today. I'm so excited. Like I'm so glad I finally filmed this. So this should be the last of my like wrapping up videos. Like I have videos to film of like things that aren't seven on Sundays, but nothing that's like needing to be done at a certain time limit anymore. So it's like, whew, don't have to be worried. Even though I feel like I've been doing a really good job of actually getting videos uploaded. I'm like really happy with how my channel and everything's going at the moment. It's just so exciting. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.